In this video, I'll be showing how to make a replica law rocket launcher that fires using flash cotton. Flash cotton, also known as gun cotton or nitrocellulose, is used in many magic tricks to give off a bright fireball. It can be bought online or at most magic shops. To fire this launcher, the flash cotton is loaded underneath a heating element in the front. The trigger is then pulled in order to ignite it. To start this project, the first step will be to take a 3 foot length of 3 inch diameter PVC pipe and press on a 4 inch to 3 inch reducing fitting onto either end. Now the next step will be to take a 1 half inch PVC end cap and mount it to the inside of this pipe. Now to mount this end cap, I'm going to drill a hole down through the back of this fitting about a half inch from the edge. That hole will go down through the pipe and then into this end cap. The hole should be made to fit a machine screw about this size. This is one and a half inches long and about four millimeters in diameter. You can see I have now drilled a hole through both this PVC fitting here and a hole through this end cap towards the back. I'm now going to attach this end cap to the inside of the pipe with this small machine screw and a nut to fit it. Now what we want to do is have two more screws coming into this end cap, one from about here and one from over here coming in this way. These two new screws are going to be the terminals for the igniter that is going to set off our flash cotton. Now you can see I've made a mark here and a mark here to drill through our pipe wall into our end cap for our terminals. Notice also that these marks are made about an inch inside of this outside edge rather than the half inch that was made for this machine screw. That is because the terminals should be farther forward than this back machine screw for the proper ignition of our flash cotton. You can see these screws now fit in nicely. At this point I'm going to tighten down each screw head onto the end of a length of wire. I'm going to tighten down these screw heads by putting a nut on the inside. Now the next step is to take a length of nichrome wire and attach it between the two terminals. Nichrome stands for nickel chromium alloy. This is an alloy that has a high electrical resistance, which means it heats up when electricity is passed through it. If you're wondering where you can find this wire, you can harvest it out of an old toaster or a hair dryer as I show here. You can also simply buy it online. This short length I'm going to attach between the two screws that have the wires connected on the outside. I will then tighten it in securely with two more nuts. Our ignition source is now complete. An optional step I've taken is to drill another hole through the wall of the pipe on either side through which to feed the wires. This will keep them out of sight. It is now time to move along toward the back of this pipe. You can see about a foot and a half back from where this fitting is, I've drilled another hole where my two wires are now being fed out of. Another two inches behind this hole I'm going to mount my trigger. What I'm using for the trigger is a replacement switch for most power tools. This particular switch has a safety button on the side so that you have to press it down in order to pull the trigger. In order to mount this switch, I'm going to put a little bit of PVC cement on top and press it against this pipe until it sets up. With our trigger now glued in place, one of the wires can be cut down and stripped on the end so that it can be fed inside one of the terminals. You want to leave enough slack in this first wire when you cut it so that it will rise around the trigger like this. This is so that your hand has room to fit inside. Now with our first wire securely connected to the trigger switch, it's time to connect our second wire to the battery. Now before I can connect the wire to the battery, the battery will obviously need to be attached to the pipe somehow. Now you could put the battery on the inside of the pipe and keep it out of the way, but I think it'll look just fine on the outside right about here. 
I have here a few strips of Velcro that I will use to attach the battery to the pipe. You can now see here that I have twisted our second wire onto the terminal of our battery. I'm now going to take one last wire and come from this terminal of our battery to the matching terminal of our switch. When the trigger is now pulled, the nichrome wire in the front will heat up, which will be able to ignite a charge of gun cotton if it is loaded. This replica rocket launcher is now 100% ready to fire, but I'm going to continue to work on it to improve the cosmetics by giving it a paint job as well as a replica scope. And that's all there is to it to build this replica law rocket launcher. If you liked this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And be sure to check out one of my other projects by clicking one of the boxes below.